What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael and welcome to Fudge Muppet. Today I'm very excited to share with you our latest Skyrim Remastered build. And speaking of Skyrim, thank you so much to everyone who tuned into our Skyrim stream on Twitch. We had a super awesome time and we were definitely blown away by how many of you actually came to check it out. So thank you very much. If you want to see some Skyrim being streamed, we've got our Twitch linked in the description. But this build has a completely new backstory. Reimagine role-playing and various new skill spells and perks so strap in for the mechanist the mechanist is a fan favorite he's also a genius capable of using his arcane abilities and technological knowledge to create the most powerful equipment imaginable but the mechanist focused his intellect on the legendary race known as the dwemer and quickly became obsessed this archaeologist will explore every dwemer ruin on tamriel to get his hands on all of the ancient dwarves artifacts he also seeks their knowledge and very importantly wants to discover the secret behind their sudden disappearance from the continent. Utilizing the technological and mechanical brilliance of the Dwemer, the Mechanist takes down his foes with scolding jets of steam, powerful automaton servants, and formidable dwarven metal armor. He also uses some magic. The Mechanist has all the might of the Centurions, with all the intellect of the Myrrh who engineered them. Before we get started, don't forget that timestamps can be found in the description to help you find your way around the video. But with that said, let's kick things off with the Mechanist. Mechanist's race, standing stone, and stats. The Mechanist can be a Red Guard, a Nord, or a Dark Elf. This is because these are the races who come from the provinces of Tamriel where Dwemer ruins are most commonly found. But for the best cohesion with our backstory, Red Guard is our suggested race. A Red Guard will also have the Adrenaline Rush ability, allowing you to quickly recover stamina for 60 seconds. And as this build can end up stamina intensive at times, this is quite useful. Early on, use the Lover Stone to help you level your various skills, but after after that, switch to the Atronarch Stone. Having high spell absorption is massively helpful for this build, as it makes him highly resistant against mages, dragons, and fire-based traps in Dwemer Ruins. It also helps against Falma you can find in some ruins who use a variety of elemental magic. The Mechanist's stat spread will be 40% health to stay alive, 40% magicka for all of your spell casting, and then 20% stamina for shield bashing and charging. You can afford to invest less into stamina, as you will have plenty of enchantments designed to give you more. More. If you're a red guard, then like I said, there's also your racial power. Your helmet also runs off stamina when it shoots steam. The Mechanist was born into the city of Ellenhur, built by the Needs long ago. His parents were humbly born, but ran a prosperous general goods store in the heart of the city. The Mechanist's father took great pride in his success, as his family had only ever been Alakir warriors for centuries. Mercantile success was a brand new achievement. Every day, he and his wife made an honest living. He would look up to the majestic ape towers of Ellen here and wonder what mystical deeds the mages were up to within. He knew nothing of magic, but he knew that if he wanted his family to reach the height of renown and intellect, becoming a part of the mages academy was essential, at least in his mind. Long ago, the mages protected the city, but then they lost trust with the citizens after becoming corrupted and abusing their power. It had taken a long time for magic users to regain their reputation. It had been slow but steady, and finally by the fourth era they were respected once more. His son, the Mechanist, would be the way he would achieve his goal. The Mechanist was taught to handle money from a young age and was encouraged to read books, whatever books he felt the urge to read. At first, he stuck to the children's tales of scary scorpions and riddle-telling demons, but eventually he began to read the histories of Tamriel, enjoying the true stories of the world over the fabricated ones. When he came of an appropriate age, his father paid his tuition fees in full and secured the young Redguard into the ranks of the Academy. His love for history gave him wisdom and insight that few of his age could rival, and his tutors were impressed but slightly worried when he said that he aspired to be as powerful as Felix Blackcaster Augustus, the legendary mage who founded the Elenhir Mages Academy. They wondered if he knew about all the trouble the guild caused Elenhir in the Second Era, but either way were happy to have a keen student. At the top of the main apex tower, the Mechanist spent most of his time reading the tomes in the Academy's library. He would read with the aid of the bright sunlight breaching the windows by day, and and then by the amber flicker of the tallow candles by night. He only ever stopped his studies to sleep when his eyes were dry and red. He believed that if his eyes weren't bloodshot, he wasn't exercising them properly. In many ways, he had much of a red guard's fire, but focused on enhancing his mind as opposed to his scimitar arm. One particular section of the histories piqued the Mechanist's interest, and they were the stories of the Dwemer, an ancient race of underground dwelling dwarves with a remarkable capacity for technological advancement. It was believed that their mechanisms, power 
powered by some form of arcane source, could achieve the extraordinary. They even had automated warriors capable of fighting alongside them. The mechanist was fascinated and learned of the many Dwemer ruins scattered around his home province. One, named Volenfell, was actually the namesake for Hammerfell when the Rorcan clan emigrated from Morrowind. After learning some destruction and restoration magic to protect himself, he decided he would volunteer to act as the Academy's roaming archaeologist, learning Dwemer secrets for the good of their intellectual advancement. The Mages Academy agreed, assigning him a squad of mages to help him uncover lost treasures, artifacts, and wisdom. They were given access to treasury supplies, and the Mechanist noticed a full set of immaculate Dwarven armor inside. Sadly for him, he wasn't allowed to take it. Their first trip was only a few short leagues into the rocky, desolate plains of Craglorn, to the ruin known as Rakonzelft. The journey proved perilous despite their arcane abilities. Craglorn was often overrun by marauding orcs or adventurous reachmen from the northeast, and they just about managed to fight off a trio of orc warriors. The Mechanist's body was unharmed, but his robes were tattered, and he'd nearly been crushed by a warhammer on multiple occasions. When they reached the ruin, they delved deep into the old underground settlement, and the Mechanist learned much more about the Dwemer simply by looking at their architecture with his own eyes, and watching the machines move in real time. It was just something that Riding couldn't fully explain. As he adventured deeper into the ruin, he eventually came to an opening that was quite flat, with two golden spheres in the middle. Dwarven spheres, he thought. The group of mages knew they were dangerous, but because there was a total of seven of them and only two of the machines, they assumed there shouldn't be too much trouble. The mages readied their spells, but progressed through the room by moving against the edges of the outer walls. They didn't want to disturb the robots, but if they did disturb them, they were ready. Step by step, they made their way around the open room, until eventually they were forced into action. One of the more experienced mages accidentally stepped on a pressure plate, causing a piston to launch out from the wall, sending him toppling face first into the floor. The dwarven spheres came to life, programmed to kill these non-Dwemer intruders. The robots unraveled, revealing blades, crossbows, and emotionless faces. They drove towards the mages and began their assault. A symphony of fireballs and healing spells rung around the chamber until the mechanist began to realize they were probably going to lose this fight. No one expected it, but four mages had fallen with only three remaining. The spheres were relentless, as expected, but to the mages' surprise, they couldn't handle it. The three survivors decided to flee, using the last of their magicka to cast healing spells and flesh cloaks. The mechanist ran with all his might. He may have chosen the arcane path of life over the warrior lifestyle, but he sure wished his fitness was prioritized now. He panted manically as he fled the ruin, the two other mages being ripped to the ground and sliced up behind him. He thought he would surely be next, but made his way to the entrance, only just escaping their metal. He slammed the doors behind him and started to head back home as fast as he could. Luckily, Dwarven Spheres weren't too good at opening big doors. As he hobbled through the sands, he noticed the adrenaline rushing through his veins, and he was thankful to be alive. That said, he felt he should have been more traumatized by the experience. Instead, he was awestruck. Watching the other mages die was horrifying, but it was also beautiful. Not the death itself, but the dwarven spheres, their ingenious design, their sleek bronze blades, as sharp as they were before the Dwemer disappeared. Even the crossbows seemed mathematically calibrated as if they had no chance of missing. After the failure of their excavation, the mages were very apprehensive about further attempts. The mechanist was saddened by this, but wouldn't let it stop him. His fascination had turned to obsession, and he began to lose countless hours of sleep thinking about the Dwemer. He especially wanted to uncover all their mysteries, such as why they even disappeared. One day they were there, documented in the pages of the history books, and then they were gone. No massacre, no plague or famine, the greatest civilization in Tamriel, with all the promise for a technological revolution, gone in an instant. His mind roiled in frustration as he mulled over the questions every waking moment, and every sleeping moment. One ruin that always took his interest was Volenfell. It lay in the vast expanses of the Alakir Desert. Supposedly there was some sort of artifact stored there known as the Guardian's Eye, although some people thought it had disappeared some time in the second era. So much disappearance with the Dwemer, so much he just couldn't grasp about it. It was all so intriguing, and he really wanted to go investigate. He knew it was going to be dangerous, but what else would his life be if it wasn't lived how he wanted? He could also make it worth the Academy's while if he brought back this ancient Dwemer artifact supposedly stored there. The Academy refused his proposal, claiming Volenfell was too far to travel. The cost would have been huge to get a squad of mages across the desert safely, and last time 
time they lost too many lives. The mechanist was crushed. He couldn't see the rationale in their words. He was truly obsessed. Being one of their archaeologists, the mechanist had been given that access to the treasury prior to his previous excavation attempt. And on his way out, he had noticed the desk where the keys were kept. He hatched a plan to do the trip to Volenfell on his own, stealing the key when the treasurer was called to an unexpected meeting. He filled his purse with gold and left a letter, promising repayment with the Guardian's eye as interest on top. He was then gripped by further temptation and put on the full set of dwarven armor that he was previously denied use of. The mechanist then left the building under the cover of night, lucky that the treasurer was still at his meeting and that the noise of his bulky armor would be heard by no one. It goes without saying that he also took a map from the academy to find the dwarven ruin itself. The journey was treacherous, especially traveling on horseback all alone. Despite the quality of his armor, the night cold seeped through and chilled him to the bone. When the sun rose, he found himself sweating and his head grew heavy. He persevered for a week, resolute in his task. After four days, he noticed he'd used over half of his rations. If he didn't make it to Volenfell soon, he would die of thirst on the return. His mouth was so dry and his brain thumped against the confines of his skull. As he continued onwards through sandy plains, the mech mechanist arrived at something he wasn't overly prepared for, bandits. They came around the hill to his left and he knew he was outnumbered and at that far too weak in his current state to fight them. He used what energy he had to conjure a fireball into his palm and as the bandits formed a circle around him, he prepared to launch it. The leader of the bandits simply laughed. It was a deep belly laugh and it dropped the mechanist's confidence to an all new low. You shouldn't cast that fireball, he said. We don't want to have to kill you now, do we? The other bandits chuckled and flurried their blades. The mechanist knew this would surely be his death, so he gave in to their requests. He would be fine risking death inside a Dwemer ruin itself, but dying before seeing Volenfell, he wouldn't let it happen. The bandits took his gold and sadly the armor, and the mechanist was sent on his way back to Ellen here with nothing but the remaining rations he had and a small skin sack of water. He would have to return here another time, hopefully with some mages from the academy. Defeated, he traveled east, and when he finally made it back to his city, he found wanted posters with his own face drawn on the front, wanted for theft from the Mage's Academy. Suddenly without a home, the mechanist felt like a true failure, although his failure had brought him freedom. He thought the Academy should have supported him on his mission. He could have made them far richer if he had reinforcements, but now he knew it was time to leave Hammerfell and he could go wherever he wanted to. His actions would disappoint his family, but he didn't care. The Dwemer were his sole focus now, and why should it be his responsibility to bring his family some sort of fame. Skyrim was only next door, supposedly home to many Dwemer ruins. Perhaps there he could learn more of the Dwemer and perhaps even uncover clues regarding the secrets of their disappearance. So he headed east into the Dral Mountains, but was caught on the border by the Imperials and carted off to Helgen. After escaping Helgen, the Mechanist will not falter from his goal. He is consumed by his desire to learn the secrets of the Dwemer, and he will explore all of the ruins, retrieving all of the Dwemer artifacts he possibly can. His search will also take him to other powerful individuals who can help in his goal, including the mages of the College of Winterhold. There are quests in this quest line which refer directly to the Dwemer disappearance and will allow you to get a unique dagger called Keening. The Dawnguard DLC will also be essential to his search, allowing him to find the Dwarven Forge where he will create an ethereal artifact. There's also a cool permanent bonus you can get for this build which also fits in with the theme. To do it, you'll need to do the quest called Unfathomable Depths, which is started at the docks in Riften when you're approached by an Argonian ranting about a lexicon. The effect you get is called Ancient Knowledge and it makes your smithing increase 15% faster and most importantly, gives you a 25% bonus when wearing Dwarven Armor. As for factions, he'll join the College of Winterhold and the Dawnguard in the Dawnguard DLC as mentioned, but on top of this, the Mechanist a former history buff back before his mind was corrupted by this Dwemer obsession will relish in the opportunity to be the Dragonborn, tapping into ancient powers, long thought lost. Therefore, the main story and the Dragonborn DLC are definitely worth your time. Also, the Dragonborn DLC will give you access to the Dwemer ruins on Solstein. With the Mechanist's backstory, role-playing, and factions out of the way, let's now get into his skills, spells, perks, and playstyle. The main skills for this build will be Block, Destruction, 
Destruction, Restoration, Heavy Armor, Smithing, and Enchanting. Before we look at the perks to take from each of these skills, let's quickly go over which spells you should learn. From the Destruction School, use whatever fire spells you want, but eventually Fireball and Incinerate will be the two of your best options. As for Restoration, you should add Sunlight spells to your arsenal, as well as any self-healing spells and spells to turn undead. You can use Shock Magic as well if you'd like for opponent mages or those enemies who are resistant to fire. But with that said, here are the Mechanist's essential perks. First up, we have Block. The Mechanist understands the importance of defense, and when he's excavating ruins overrun by poison arrow shooting Falmer, having a trusty shield is a lifesaver. He has realized that adventuring deep into Dwemer ruins with nothing but his own magic skill probably isn't the safest idea. From the Block skill tree, take everything. The Block Runner and Shield Charge perks will allow you to move fast with the shield raised and even charge through your enemies, while the bashing perks on the right side will allow you to knock your foes off balance and even disarm them in the process, doing plenty of damage. Next up, we have the Mechanist's Magic Art related skills. Before going on his first excavation, the Mechanist saw the wisdom in preparing both offensively and defensively, utilizing the arcane resources of the Mage's Academy. Therefore, from the Destruction skill tree, you should take the left branch, the third branch, and then the fourth branch up to Expert Destruction. With Augmented Flames and Augmented Shock, your Fire and Shock spells will be 50% more powerful. And then from the Restoration skill tree, go for the first three branches, and then the fourth up to Adept Restoration. Ward Absorb is actually a great pick for this build, not because you're using wards, as wards are generally ineffective as a spell, but because your unique Daedric Artifact Shield Spellbreaker throws up a ward when you block with it, which will allow you to block to absorb magic art from incoming spells. It's pretty cool stuff. The most recognizable thing about the Mechanist is his masterfully crafted set of Dwarven Metal Armor, and his Dwemer Metal is hardy, durable, and reliable, much like the folks who forged it. From the Heavy Armor skill tree, we suggest grabbing the lot. Conditioning will remove the weight from Heavy Armor and allow you to move unhindered, and this works perfectly alongside your shield charges. After losing his armor, the Mechanist really longed to wear a set like it again. Because of this, he actually taught himself to smith it. He will develop an incredibly skilled hand and a firm understanding of technology and crafting, becoming quite a good smith. From the smithing skill tree, we recommend taking arcane blacksmith and then the perks up to dwarven smithing. Finally, we have enchanting, and this arcane art will make the mechanist's armor that much better. From this skill tree, go for the middle branch up to extra effect. This lets you have two enchantments per item. As for the playstyle, this will be quite different to your usual bash and charge style due to the unique effects of your gear. You will be doing plenty of bashing and charging while firing destruction spells from your free hand or healing if necessary. But thanks to the visage of Mazund, you can also go on the offensive by scalding your foes with a jet of steam. Alternatively, you can switch to a regular enchanted dwarven helmet and use the dagger keening in one hand with the ethereal staff in the other. With the enchanted helmet in place of the visage of Mazund, you can reduce your destruction casting cost to zero in addition to your other dwarven armor pieces and this allows you to use keening indefinitely without the enchantment running out. With the staff, you can conjure dwarven automatons to fight alongside you. The classic playstyle, however, will be to shield bash and charge as you shoot fireballs from your right hand. We just mentioned a lot of unique items in the playstyle, so let's go into detail here with the mechanist's gear. You'll want to wear a full set of smithed up dwarven armor, but in place of the helmet, you'll use the unique headpiece, the visage of Mazund. This helmet is great for roleplaying and allows you to use the cool steam ability, draining your stamina to deal 15 damage per second. This can be fired almost almost infinitely while the Adrenaline Rush ability is active. This can be found in the Ruin of Falbathars on Solstheim. Enchant everything you can with Fortified Destruction and Restoration. Also add a ring and necklace of your choice and remember you'll want that backup Dwarven Helmet to be enchanted too. Then focus on Stamina Regen and Stamina for bashing, charging and using your Visage of Mazund ability. Your spellcasting cost reduction will be 75% for the spells we're using, but with the spare helmet you can easily turn this into 100% completing all of the slots needed for it. As for weapons, we don't really use them as we use our fire spells like Fireball and Incinerate in the right hand most of the time alongside the shield. However, there is that special Dwemer Dagger Keening. This Dwemer artifact is fantastic for roleplaying and absorbs 10 points of stamina, magicka, and health on a strike. And I mentioned our shield, which is the unique shield, Spellbreaker. This shield fits in perfectly with the aesthetics of the character and also the searching for artifacts concept. While blocking, you'll create a ward on the shield that protects against spells for up to 50 points. Remember that we have the Ward Absorb perk, so we'll actually absorb Magicka using the shield. It's a pretty cool setup. Finally, the Ethereal Staff can be used to summon Dwarven Spiders and Spheres for 60 seconds. When you reach the Dwarven Forge in the Lost to the Ages quest,
must obviously choose the staff. So the two playstyles tend to be having all Dwarven armor with the visage of Mazund, Spellbreaker and Destruction Magic or switch out to the other enchanted Dwarven helmet and have the Ethereal Staff and Keening. Subscribe to Fudge Muppet if you're new and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. In the description you can find links to our Twitch and we are doing awesome streams recently, Twitter, Patreon and all other social media so be sure to check those out. Also in the description are timestamps to help you navigate throughout the video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, you make our dream job possible. I'm Michael and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.